Welcome to Retro Dodo and you're watching our personal best Sega Saturn games and coming in at number 10 is World Heroes Perfect which launched in 1996. ADK and SNK teamed up for World Heroes Perfect, the fourth and final title in the World Heroes series. For the most part, the game follows this style and format of the previous three. All of the same characters return with the addition of a few new ones, and players can perform weak and strong special moves as well as combo moves. Each character now boasts a special ABC move, brought about by holding down A, B and C simultaneously. These moves vary from counters and blocks to fakes, so pick characters wisely if you want the upper hand in battle. As if three tournaments to decide the ultimate fighter weren't enough, a fourth and final battle to decide the ultimate champion has been organised. Zeus is determined to prove himself after a shocking defeat, though the fighters soon discover a new enemy from yesteryear approaching. Gameplay follows the signature three bout style made famous in Street Fighter and uses many of the same features. The backgrounds contain interesting NPCs as audience members and the settings are all well thought out and brimming with background filler. World Heroes Perfect is quite honestly a perfect fighting game, a name choice the developers obviously felt proud of. Critics loved it, gamers loved it and we still love it to this day. It's pure SNK brilliance and well worth a play. Number 9. Radiant Silver Gun, which launched in 1998. Radiant Silver Gun continues to be one of the best Sega Saturn games that I go back to again and again. It's one of my favourite forward scrolling shoot em ups and features some insane explosions and huge space battles. Those are two things that will instantly make any game 100% better, right? Unfortunately, this game only released in Japan, but it's fairly easy to get hold of a region converter or a Japanese Saturn console. It might end up being an expensive purchase, but it's worth forgetting rent for a month or so just to experience this epic adventure. So what happens in Radiant Silvergun? Well, players control a fighter pilot protecting Earth. Some nosy explorer has dug up a weird crystal and it's calling tons of aliens towards the planet. Your job is to stop them from getting their hands on the crystal and destroying Earth in the process. Each spacecraft has a variety of different weapons and a sword for close combat. That's right, flying sword battles in space. In a weird twist, hitting enemies of the same colour awards bonus points. It can be hard to tell what's what when aliens are all flying over the screen, so we won't blame you for just shooting everything in sight and hoping for the best. With epic boss fights and badass spaceships, Radiant Silver Gun feels like Ikaruga and R-Type rolled into one. We absolutely love it, and hopefully you will too. 8. Burning Rangers, which launched in 1998. No, these aren't the guys that periodically burn parts of the national parks to keep the area under control, though they are firefighters. The game sees players moving through a futuristic world where the main danger left to humankind is fire. Voice commands direct gamers through corridors and burning buildings as they save civilians, omitting the need for an in-game map. That might sound a little hard to follow, but it's actually one of the defining characteristics of this game. Critics loved it and Burning Rangers became somewhat of a swan song for the Saturn. It was one of the last few games released for the console in the United States, and many avid Sega gamers believe it's one of the best for the console. It wouldn't be in this list if it wasn't. The game is essentially a shooting game where fire is the only enemy. It's a nice change from killing NPCs and makes me feel like a real hero every time I play it. Nice one, Sonic Team. You, you nailed it with Burning Rangers. Good job. 7. Sega Rally Championship, which launched in 1995. This game was one of the first rally games to give you a variety of different driving surfaces to tear around. Unlike racing games that came before it, the road surface affected the car's handling, giving you a more realistic experience. Sega Rally Championship is considered by many critics to be one of the pivotal racing titles in video gaming history. The graphics were spot on and the custom created soundtrack had a way of sticking in your head as though it was a top 40 tune. The World Championship was set in three different world areas, desert, forest and mountain. I always assumed that these were Middle East, American and Europe, though I guess that's up to each player's imagination. You can choose from three different cars and try to get to the head of the pack at the end of each level. Your end position dictates where you start off in the next round, just like every racing game from Formula 1 to Mario Kart. Everyone loves a mindless racing game and Sega Rally Championships is one of the first and one of the best. 
6. Albert Odyssey Legend of Ildian, which came out in 1996. This title is a good old fashioned RPG with top down views, menu subscreens, and turn based battles aplenty. And the main character is called Pike, not Albert. The story follows Pike, a teen whose parents were slaughtered by monsters. His sister turns to stone, he's raised by harpies, and he finds out that the wizards are trying to revive an ancient god named Vlag. Talk about having a tough childhood. Pike's main companion is a talking sword named Cyrus. Both Terry Pratchett and the White Ranger taught me that talking swords is pretty badass. What better way to take down an evil lord and a villainous sorcerer? Rather than putting emphasis on voice acting and cutscenes like many Final Fantasy titles or the popular Riviera Game Boy Advance game, Albert Odyssey uses its soundtrack as the star of the show. It's a phenomenal work of musicianship and is worth a listen even if you don't buy the game. How many titles can you say that about? 5. Daytona USA which came out in 1995 I think it's safe to say that Daytona USA is the most iconic and successful arcade racer of all time. The home port looks sick too. There's three tracks, real life car handling that requires the reflexes of a ninja to not hurtle into the sides, and a stressful countdown timer continually ticking away. Yep, that's the recipe for a great arcade game. Plus, with 40 cars to choose from in Saturn mode, there's at least 39 reasons to play through it again once you finish the game the first time. Understandably, the Saturn port isn't as fast or as smooth as the original arcade version, but I think we can forgive it for any loss in quality. Playing Detona with a few glitches in bed is still better than going to the arcade in your pajamas. Players start off with the Hornet, one of the most famous cars in video gaming history. Outrun other gamers and get over the line first using all the tricks in the rulebook to get ahead of your opponents. Sadly, and I can't skirt over this, the Saturn doesn't have a multiplayer mode. I know, weird isn't it? Still, I guess you can have your mates over and take it in turns to play, or just pretend with a spare controller. A game for loners then, sounds good to me. 4. Panzer Dragoon Saga which came out in 1998 not only is this game one of the most critically acclaimed games that Sega ever made for one of their consoles, but it's also one of the most exciting RPGs of all time too. You play as a mercenary named Edge who rides about on a dragon. I think that's all you need to know. Panzer Dragoon incorporates both real-time and turn-based battles along with all of the side quests, object collecting and interaction that you would expect from a solid RPG. The worlds are honestly amazing and once more you ride about on a bloody dragon and I don't think I could ever get bored of playing it. So in that case, and it's the reason why it's number 4 on this list, just check it out. 3. Shining the Holy Ark which came out in 1996. It's an immersive RPG adventure with one of the largest swords I've seen out of all Final Fantasy games. Just look at the size of that thing, I'd need a winch to help lift that thing up with my weak arms. Everything about this game screams old school RPG. Unlike its predecessor, Shining Wisdom, which is also a great game, Holy Ark boasts classic turn-based fight sequences and explorative missions through dank and dingy dungeons. It's the stuff dreams are made of, honestly. You might not believe it now, but Shining the Holy Ark was also one of the best looking RPGs of the time too. The combination of sprites and polygons created a visual feast for the eyes, sending critics and players into mind melting overload. With a long list of characters ready to step into your party of four or sit back as a reserve, there's plenty of help at hand. All battles occur at random, so be prepared for a simple journey to take an absolute age. Still, that's what RPGs are all about, and every battle gives players the chance to up their skills and gain experience points. Oh, and you can befriend pixies to do your bidding. I probably should have mentioned that absolutely awesome fact before moving on. 2. The Legend of Oasis which launched in 1996 It's a very close call, but The Legend of Oasis takes second place in the list. It's one of the most immersive adventure games on the console and a classic sequel to one of the best Sega Genesis games ever. European gamers like me may know this game better as The Story of Thor 2, though the NTSC title is much cooler. Players take a dude named Leon through a series of perilous levels in search of elemental spirits. In true Sega fashion, the game's antagonist has a rubbish name too. The wizard of Ajito tries to thwart Leon at every turn, though he often gets left agitated over his defeats. 
Gameplay all happens in real time, with Leon wielding a blade and summoning spirits to attack enemies if he doesn't want to get his hands dirty. Like the fairies in Zelda, these spirits also heal Leon when he's about to bite the dust. I could do with one of these guys following me around to be fair. Critics love the insane graphics on this game. Even though it's a top down title, the levels and background look rich and vibrant. The water even looks pretty believable too for its time. Right, I'm basically just gonna say if you like the early Zelda games then you'll be all over the Legend of Oasis. Conquer dungeons and gather sacred items, it's basically Link's Awakening. And number one, Nights Into Dreams, which launched in 1996. The Sonic team might not have been able to get their act together to make a new Sonic title for the Saturn, but they really excelled themselves with this game. The concept, the world, the colors, everything about Nights Into Dreams is incredible, and it's considered by many, not just us, to be the best game of the console. I guarantee that you'll have trouble putting your controller down if you snag a copy. So what is Nights Into Dreams? Well, a little like 40 winks for the N64, you follow two teenagers who enter a dream world called Nightopia. You team up with an androgynous character named Knights and must stop an evil villain named Wiseman from causing havoc. What is it with Sega and their terrible villain names? Anyway, time limits on every level give you the same nail-biting pressure that you feel while playing Sonic titles. Instead of collecting rings, you have to fly through them, and the atmosphere of each dream level is simply breathtaking. So because of that, it's a clear winner in our eyes. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit subscribe and head over to our website if you want to read about the top 30 best Sega Saturn games of all time. Catch you in the next one.